Hello friends, it is now Saturday and I'm out on my parents' porch and it is raining so hopefully you can still hear me. Um, I am in the middle of a 24 hour readathon for the Irish readathon that um, Elaine and Leanne and Aoife are all hosting and they just decided randomly to do a 24-hour readathon this weekend. So it started at eight this morning and it is now huh, late afternoon and I've only gotten about three hours of reading in off and on, but um, I have been tracking it with this new app that I found. It's just called A Tracker, and but I'll put a little, I'll put it here and I can make it track my reading sessions. So it's, you know, it's pretty simple but um, I kind of like seeing how many hours that I've gotten read so far. So, so far I've gotten about three hours of reading in and I was able to finish Tulips in Trouble, which I have been reading for March Mystery Madness. Obviously, this is not an Irish read, but <laughs> I needed to finish this. So I just figured I would start with this one. So, um, and Elaine has said that we don't have to read Irish uh, books the entire 24 hours, so, um, but I am going to be doing an Irish read next, so it's fine. But Tulips in Trouble is the fifth book in the Port Danby series by London Lovett. It's a cozy mystery, and it focuses on a lady named Pink, and she is a flower shop owner with a really, um, good nose, like, she, and she ends up helping to solve mysteries using her million dollar nose. This one I think was actually one of my favorite ones that I've read so far. Uh, it focuses on an art class that is in Port Danby um, painting the lighthouse and one of those students um, goes missing and something happens to her and Pink has to help Detective Briggs find out what's going on. And this one had a lot of action in it and there was an adorable puppy that comes into the picture and um, there's kind of a love triangle that goes on in these books that uh, really kind of uh, got heated up a little bit in this book so this was definitely one of my favorites in the series so far so I highly recommend and I do really like trying to get through an entire cozy mystery series and really delving into the characters. I, I like this a lot. So if I can get caught up on this one, I'm going to continue with binging cozy mysteries, I think. So, um, so that is my first read of the weekend. And now I think I'm going to start on an Irish read, um, an Irish country Christmas by um, Patrick Taylor. Patrick Taylor is an Irish author and this is set in Ireland, obviously. I'm not sure. I'm not sure much about it other than I think it um, focuses on a country doctor because this might, I don't think this is the first in the series, um, but there is one called an Irish country doctor that I think might be the first in the series. So, um, but I'm going to attempt to read this one and see if I can read them out of order. If I can't, then I might try to find an ebook copy of um, the first one that I can maybe read instead and then pick this one up at a later date. But this is, an, is a large print edition, so I don't think that it's going to take me this long to read. It looks really chunky, but I don't think that it will. I might not get it done this weekend, but I'm going to attempt at least a few chapters. And if it seems like it's going to take me uh, or, you know, it's not going to be easy to read out of order, then I'll stop. But um, so yeah, that's where I'm at at this point. Um, sorry for the frizzy hair. Like I said, it's raining outside and I took a shower and then um, I was like thinking, well, it's not raining at the time I thought this. So maybe I should go for a walk jog. <laughs> so I did that as you saw in a previous clip and, you know, washing my hair was out the window. So <laughs> so this is sadly what you're getting, but at least, at least my hair is clean, right? <laughs> so, all right, friends, I will check back in with you later at some point and 
tell you what else I got read. Talk to you later. Hello friends, it's now Monday morning, and sorry I didn't uh, update you yesterday, but um, I just was having kind of a lazy day and uh, didn't really feel like talking much, <laughs> so, uh, but um, yeah, I had kind of a nice relaxing Sunday for the most part, um, as you saw from previous clips it rained off and on um, and I was still at my parents but uh, I got to sit out on their their deck and um, for a little bit anyway until the rain got too uh, loud on their tin porch roof <laughs> and then I couldn't hear the booktubers that I was listening to so that wasn't doing me any good. But anyway, I had kind of a lazy Sunday as far as reading goes. I didn't um, do much of it at all, really. I wanted to get my watch later list down. And um, so I just kind of decided Sunday was going to be my booktube day. Um, so, but uh, let me catch you up on the book that I started while the 24-hour Irish readathon was going on, I started The Irish Country Christmas by Patrick Taylor. And this is written by an Irish author, and it is about Ireland. <laughs> so um, I'm only about 100 pages in. Now, 100 pages in this one, because it's a large print edition, is probably not as far <laughs> as like the normal copy would be. Um, so I'm about four chapters in at this point. And so far, I really like it. It's, um, it's kind of like an old timey type feeling to it, even though, oh, I gotta switch my hands. Even though it is, um, a, it, I think it's set in like the 1960s, but it just like has this kind of old timey country, um, feel to it, like the the, the main characters in this are doctors, country doctors, because that's like the first title of the first book in this series is the Irish country doctor. And they like make house calls and they, you know, just kind of have this like quaint life <laughs> that is just kind of relaxing to see. I mean, they like within the first four chapters of this book, like somebody almost dies. So <laughs> it's not like necessarily just like, oh, Christmas tidings, you know, <laughs> kind of a thing. But um, but it still just has this cozy quality to it. I guess that's the word I'm looking for, cozy, which I kind of need right now. But like I said, I, I'm only about 100 pages into it. So I'm going to try to read this over the next couple of days and see how far I can get in it. Um, yesterday, I I just kind of had one of those days where I just wasn't in a reading mood, like a physical reading mood. Um, I tried to read for a while um, after I kind of got to a point in my watch later list where I was satisfied with how far I'd gotten. And I just was like, oh, I can't. I just, I'm not focused on it today. You know, just some things, some things popped up yesterday that just kind of had my brain occupied and I just kind of wasn't in the mood. So that meant that I switched to an audiobook and I switched to The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie, which I originally was going to read for Middle Grade March, 
but this is probably more YA. Um, the, the character in it, Flavia Deleuze, is 11 at the, this is the first book in the series, so she's 11 when they start. But just the themes in it, um, I mean, you can have a middle grade murder mystery, but there are just other things that happen in this that surround the murder that are just a little bit too adult, I think. Um, so I would categorize this more in the young adult category. But it does fit for the Irish readathon because one of the prompts is the, just to read a book with green on the cover. And this is all green. <laughs> so I actually used this last year for um, that prompt in the Irish readathon. Uh, there's nothing Irish about this other than like the vicinity of the characters is perhaps close to Ireland because they're in the UK. But <laughs> um but other than that, there's nothing Irish about it. But, um, yeah, I just, I love, I love listening to this on audiobook. I think last year when I started it, I started it at the end of March as well. <laughs> I don't know why I, I start this at the end of the month. But um, I think when I was trying to read it, Physically, I was just burned out by that point. And she, Flavia Deleuze, the main character, is really into chemistry. So there's a lot of chemistry science talk in this. And I think at the time I was just like, well, I don't care. <laughs> so, but listening to it on audiobook has been a lot better. Um, so I am not quite finished with this. So my plan is to finish it today, Monday. And then... Um, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot in this, you know, this time around. So, um, it's been really easy for me to listen to it. So, yeah, so that's good because I, I've heard a lot of good things about it and I was kind of bummed last year when I didn't love it. <laughs> so, um, but I'm enjoying it a lot more. The narrator on the audiobook that I'm listening to, I've listened to her narration a few different times for different young characters and I really like her uh her voice her voice narration so um I'll try to remember I can't remember her name but I will try to remember to post it down below so so anyway that's my just quick little overview of my weekend I think that for this week I am going to take a break from vlogging I just don't feel like there's anything vlog worthy at this point um because we're just all stuck at home doing the same things every day so I and I don't have anybody else that lives with me I don't have cute pets to take for, take video of so um I think I'm just going to switch over to doing a Friday reads for April for the foreseeable future um until I can start going places again <laughs> oh, but um so yeah, I think that might be what I what I do. So expect some more um, like sit down videos from me in the near future. I'm gonna try to make them still chatty, um, but I just don't think I'm going to put together a vlog. Um, yeah, so nah. But <laughs> so okay. Anyway, you don't care about that. I will talk to you next week, friends. Um, on a Friday, hopefully. So, all right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.